It's election day. Republicans versus Democrats. Elephants versus donkeys. Red versus blue. Now, I don't care about politics in the slightest. I'm just doing this because the timing was right and I'll promptly shut up, but you know what I do care about? Anime girls. Top five red and blue haired anime girls. Now, three rules for this countdown. First is, I have to have seen the show. I'm actually ranking the characters based on their personalities rather than superficial appearance. Second, it has to be their natural color, no dyeing allowed. And third, I'm not taking what we refer to as red hair. It's gotta be blood red. Let's rank them waifus. Asuka may not be able to make the list due to my standards for red hair, but Rei Ayanami is still in the running for Team Blue. I've said already that it took a while before I warmed up to Rei's cold demeanor, but I've realized that I only makes her eventual doses of happiness all the more worth it. That's the appeal of the Kudere. Also, while Ava's aren't your typical mechas, she is still a mecha pilot, and I can't help but find that hot. Hell, I even like her mental instability because I want to comfort her through it. But she only bottoms out this list because she very rarely defrosts into something cute, and I'm not ready to have my heart broken again so soon. I have a weird thing about the anime I pick out. I've watched a show and it's turned out to be a harem more than once. You can say I deserved it on Monster Musume, but I really wasn't expecting it on when supernatural battles became commonplace. But I think it works there because the girls are developed, like main girl Tomio Kanzaki. She's quick to call out Ando when he's being a chuny fuck, but she'll take his advice when he's being smart. She's a little bit tsundere, but still very open and appreciative. Her superpower is Zawarudo. I mean, she's still no Hatako, but she does well for her fiery head clan. Let's face it, if you're watching this video, you're a nerd too, a shitty neat. So is basically everyone that watches Lucky Star, and that's why they all gravitate towards Kanata Izumi. Personally, I'm more of a Tsukasa guy, but she has purple hair so she doesn't count. Kanata's fun because she's got nothing to hide, she doesn't care if she shares that she played games all night instead of studying for the test she's going to fail. She's kinda shameless about her irresponsibility and otaku... ...ness. I like it. Also, she's got a flat chest and she's proud of it, I'm totally into that. Flat is justice, baby. The devil as a part-timer has no reason to be as good as it is. And when your devil is working the register at McDonald's, the legendary hero's gotta be something special too. Oh yeah, Emi Yusa certainly is. And someone's probably reminding me, red isn't her natural color, she's got silver hair. And yes, you're right, the hero Amelia does have silver hair. Emi Yusa has red hair. Distinction. She won me over already by being a girl with a sword, I do loves me some swords, she's certainly feisty, and what's that flat chest scale sitting on? Yeah, that's my shit. I think ReZero is recent enough and popular enough that I don't have to explain why Rem makes this list. As someone who started off the series expecting to be an Amelia guy, it's incredible how much Rem improved, though that's also because they basically completely dropped Amelia in the second half. I imagine Rem is the most amazing thing you've ever seen if you've got a maid fetish, but if you don't, she's still super nice, kicks some ass, says exactly what you need to hear when you're lost in despair, and there's hints that she's naughtier than she lets on. Subaru, you fucking imbecile. Yo, Excel World is really damn good. And some of the dual avatars, for whatever in-universe reason, share color theming with their users, so it's safe to assume Red's under control. Yuniko Kozuki is a foul-mouthed fifth grader initially pretending to be that classic little sister archetype, which only serves to make her more hilarious. Also, while she's a little more than a brat in the real world, in the accelerated world, she's one of the six kings of pure color, with her primary weapon being a giant fortress of armaments. Proven once again, armed girls are one of the paths to my heart. Sometimes, nature takes it into their own hands to fix humanity's mistakes. We're all sick of this story. But what if it wasn't about shaming the species that made it, and was instead a comedy about a hilariously ineffective messenger? Bam! Squid Girl. 
The other way to my heart is a non-human girl not fully getting human society, but she tries. Also, she just usually looks like she's having a good time. Now, her hair is actually tentacles, so it's possible to argue she doesn't count, but this is my list and I say it's cool. Speaking of non-human girls, Monster Musume is seriously awesome. It's probably the most varied selection of girls you'll find on television, not just in personalities, but each one of them is a different species. And because it's anime, they have unrealistic hair colors too, so Mia. She's basically the main girl of the harem. She's a Lamia with big boobs, and she loves her darling very much. She's so love-struck, it's absolutely adorable. Also, turns out Lamia is a great way to introduce you to your inevitable monster girl fetish. We're still on Monster Musume, so I don't have to repeat myself. Poppy is seriously the best. She's absolutely adorable, always happy, pretty stupid, got some nice wings, talons that could rip your organs out. I really do think she's as close to perfect as anime girls have gotten. And befitting of her harpy nature, she's got sky blue hair that matches her feathers. Also, is it any surprise my favorite monster girl is the one with the flattest chest? All my preferences are just on full display here. Yoko Littner. Come on, you were all expecting this. She regularly tops the list of red-haired anime characters regardless of gender. Hell, she ranks high as an anime character in general. People love their Gurren Lagann. I've made it clear I adore this show, and Yoko's a good character. She's tough, able to fight with a sniper rifle capable of taking on mechs, but she can also make a good teacher, a great team mom, and a few attempts at love. She's very... Well-rounded, for lack of a better phrase, is by far the most marketed character and still rarely hits the coveted spot of top Gurren Lagann character because this show kicks ass. Personally, I prefer Nia because she's so cute, but I seriously can't tell what color her hair is, so Yoko's the only one representing in a spot she most certainly deserves. So, in the spirit of the election, which team do you stand behind? Perhaps you're a... Green Party supporter? How about a write-in? Which character do you think should have been on either list? Discuss it in the comments, and please, let's prove we're better than politics by keeping things civil, chill, and cool. Also, I forgot to put Aqua on the list, so please don't sue me, she's probably on there somewhere. Thank you for understanding.